We're going to move on to Jeff Wiggins, who falls into the gaps between some of these places. Uh, Jeff is someone that I know of. I uh, met on Twitter originally. I think you're on Mastodon now and probably doing yes. a little bit of both like with like the rest of us. Yep. Um, Jeff, why don't we just get a sense of, you know, in, in sort of like 90 seconds, tell us just like what your situation is with Internet access. So it's been a real wild ride. Um just going way back, um, I grew up in a, 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 a suburb of Akron, Ohio, which was actually the test market for uh, Time Warner's Roadrunner service, one of the early uh, uh, broadband ca cable services. And uh, when I moved to, uh, to to Columbus, Ohio, that was something that was uh, sort of uh, uh, growing and, and had been established here. So I had always been an early adopter and a user of broadband services going uh, way back. And starting in, in 2015, um, I moved to Licking County, Ohio. Now, Licking County, Ohio is the next county east from Franklin, which is where Columbus, Ohio is the majority of. So I'm not too far away from civilization. Uh, living. You call Columbus Africa. civilization? I, I don't uh, know. <laughs> it, it depends on how you look at it, I suppose. In, in terms of, uh, I mean, it, it, we've got Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus. <laughs> I mean, one of them's got to be civilization, I'm sure. I'll take all of them without Ohio State. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make all your neighbors mad. You're, you're oh, talking. No. You're talking. It's called, it's called the Ohio State, Christopher. <laughs> the yes. Ohio State University. Yeah, you're, you're talking so, to two Big Ten folks here who do not really like Ohio. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. I like a, let's just also be clear Doug's considering Maryland to be part of the Big Ten so <laughs> oh when did that happen oh just kidding um <laughs> so so living here in Licking County I mean I, I still was uh, uh I'm not currently I'm working at home now but at the time I was commuting back and forth to Columbus and when I purchased the house out here in Licking County we kind of wanted to be out of the city um I grew up in the suburbs I really there wasn't a city person to begin with um, we, we purchased the house before we went to closing, we, uh, contacted our, our broadband providers. You know, the first thing you do is you call the electric company and say, we're closing on this date <coughs> session on the following. Um, and you do that with the same thing with the gas company you do. And, you know, you go through that routine, right. And we called the, the, the cable company to have our cable installed. And we also called uh, CenturyLink to have, um, DSL installed. And so, um, we went, everything was set up. We had our appointments. Everything was going swimmingly. We go to our closing. We sign all the paperwork. We're, we're great. We're new homeowners. You know, this is super exciting. Or we got the house of our dreams in the country. We got our keys, came out to the house. And, uh, you know, the day that we had uh, scheduled um, both providers to come out and do their installation, they both showed up in the driveway and said, we've got bad news. There's no service here. So, um, and let's I just pause there for one second. Okay. Yeah. Because like, this is one of the things that I think is sort of important to understand. They don't send texts out unless they think they can do it, right? It's not like they're right. being cynical about it. They legitimately have no idea what they're doing running their business, right? They had, they, right. They had no idea there wasn't service there. It's, it's really funny that you mentioned that because when CenturyLink sent their technician out, they had previously, before the technician came, mailed me the welcome packet with the DSL modem and all of the supplies and all the hardware that, were, that, that go along with doing the on-site install, right? So I, I had that stuff here. And because our address was not serviced and he came out and showed up and, and noticed that the, the address wasn't serviced, of course, they corrected their system right away. And I couldn't return their hardware to them because at that point I was an unserved customer. So I still have it sitting over here in the corner somewhere. So, you know, that was my first foray into this. I had no idea, um, you know, having come from the, the background that I did with the Roadrunner service in Akron. And, and I, I didn't know that this rural broadband issue existed. And this was my introduction to it. So, of course, we turned to... Um, uh, uh, Time Warner, now Spectrum, um, was the other provider who was actually going to do the cable service. And they also had us listed as a serviceable address. And I thought, well, you know what? Cable's going to be better than DSL anyway. Why didn't we do that in the first place? So they too sent a technician out and came to find out that there's no wire on the pole. So that's two providers that had our address wrong in their own databases. Now, these are the people who were informing the, the FCC broadband maps, right? They don't even know where their own service is. So um, obviously, I'm in a panic. I work in IT. Um, and it's very important. I, you know, I'm, I'm 24 hours on call, so I have to have access to my computer. I have to have something to, to be able to do my work. So I'm trying to do everything that I can to get some service here. So of course, I'm trying to twist the arm of then Time Warner, who was giving me, you know, a quote, I think I, I wrote it down here is $31,885 to go the 900 feet. So I have Spectrum 900 feet to the north. 
I have CenturyLink about a quarter mile to the south. So what's that, about 1,300 feet. And here I am in a cluster of houses in the middle with no provider whatsoever. So, um, But if you had fixed wireless, you still wouldn't have service. <laughs> <laughs> but if I have fixed wireless, I would, well, I'll get to that. Trust me. <laughs> no, I know. I know we're going there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, what's the, the other alternative? So right about the same time that all this was taking place, of course, the Time Warner quote, I mean, I'm not going to pay $31,000 for them to run uh, infrastructure down the street, not to mention they would have to work with the energy co-op to get pull permits. The energy co-op wasn't too thrilled about this whole thing. Every, all their infrastructure was underground. It was behind houses. They had no idea how they were going to get it here. So we kind of figured that was a non-starter. So we went on to explore and I said, well, there Actually, is hold on. Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah. going to keep jumping in for a second. No, Doug, fine. I'm curious if, do you think if he had written that, wrote that, written that check, that Time Warner Cable would have, uh, or that charter would have done it? I think they would have said, you know no. what? We decided, no. no, we're not going to do it. No, they would have sent a guy out and go, oh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. This is really $87,000. I think they made the quote based upon the map, is what I think. Yeah. Yeah. So just to be clear, that <laughs> happens because we've seen people that have been like, I tried to write the check and it still didn't work. Do you work. know how, ma how many people I get? Like, I mean, I probably get like five of these a week of people who are outside our territory and our engineers like say, how much is it going to cost? Do we want to go there or do we not? Um, that are not cities. I get this all the time. I mean, right. it's, it's not just comp or charter or whatever, it's, but it's who makes the decision and who actually makes it happen. But you um, would so quote them a fair good. price. Oh yeah, we don't we don't make any money on it. It's break right. even cost for us, right? Or if it makes sense or it gives us a route, we'll build it. But it's not like to the one home that costs fifty thousand right. dollars. Are we going to build it? Doesn't right. Make sense. Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. No, that's fine. Uh, you know, the interesting thing about it is I, I'm in a neighborhood that uh, it's you know I say it's rural Licking County, Ohio, but really we're not that big. I mean, the large lots around here there are far there is farmland around here, but typically the residential lots in this neighborhood are are, are between two and five acres. So Yes, much larger than you would see in an urban city environment, not as large as you would see in a truly rural area where the houses are, are, are very far spaced apart. So I looked at another alternative and we had a statewide uh, fixed wireless network that was deployed back in 2013. Um, it was Agile Networks. They had made a deal with the state government to utilize the, the Marks Towers. Those are the multi-agency uh, radio towers that are used by like the state highway patrol, uh, the EMA for coordination during emergency events. They have those towers in place so they can use a single uh, unified radio system across all of the, the emergency agencies. So they had make the, made this fixed wireless deal uh, to deploy um, fixed wireless in all 88 counties. And part of the deal was they were going to be the internet provider to all of the state agencies and offices, Wayne National Forest, which is federal, and all of those places using this fixed wireless system. And part of the bargain that they were getting for utilizing those Marks Towers at, uh, that were government-owned towers um, was they were also going to be providing home and business internet service through that. So I reached out to contact them, and I have a tower that's a Marks Tower that's line of sight from my home. I thought, oh, this is great, right? Turns out that their equipment is oriented 180 degrees away from here, and they had no desire to put any equipment that was oriented 180 degrees this direction. So that was another strikeout. So here we are. We just got this new home, and we've got no service whatsoever. So, you know, we're we're trying to do the 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 4G hotspots. We're trying to do all of the things that 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 can try to keep things running. We went through an iteration where I don't know if you guys remember the, the the Karma Mobility when they spun up the MVNO that was going to be the, you know the savior of of home internet, um, and that business model didn't work. So we ended up having that for a few months, and then it went away. Well, what, uh, what was it, what yeah. was the name of that? Uh, name Karma of it? Karma Mobility. They were a MVNO that's that's that my list here. Okay, Karma Mobility. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they 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 spun up. I have up a question and, for you, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. On the like MLS, I mean, maybe this is an like idiotic question. Do they have what services you can get for internet? And did it serve say anything on the MLS listing or not? Yeah, so it listed because uh, the CenturyLink was a provider here. Um, they listed CenturyLink, and um, I don't know if Time Warner at the time was listed. I would have to go back and look. I know CenturyLink was listed. The previous owner of the house um, had HughesNet which should have been a big clue to me when I saw the giant dish on the side of the house. I'd never crossed my mind. Of course, this was my first experience with this problem, right? I thought, well, maybe the guy really likes his satellite. So um, <laughs> I, I didn't really explore it. And of course, you know, in the, the listing, it said that this was um, provided. And of course, we took it for face value because, I mean, we don't have water. We don't have sewer. I mean, we're well and septic out here. I get that. 
So we know we're not going to have all of the, the amenities, but um, that was one that, that we didn't expect. expect. And because uh, CenturyLink was stating that they provided service here, everybody took it for, for, for granted that they did. Mm -hmm. So we went through a series of those MVNOs and we tried to do the the, the 4G hotspots. That got us by uh, for a couple of years. You know, we were never uh, a streaming household. We were never doing anything other than basically paying the bills and things. Um, and then uh, uh, COVID came around and we actually had a hotspot that was issued by our school district. So that our son was able to do his work um, at home when, when the schools were closed. And so we kind of muddled along and made it through. Um, we st I still stayed after CenturyLink, and I've still stayed after uh, Spectrum to no avail. It's still not a, a service that's offered. Then something interesting happened uh, during COVID. Uh, we got a notification that uh, that T-Mobile was now providing their fixed wireless home internet services. This, and so this is um, we're, we're we're now fast forwarding up to to 2020. And in 2020, we, we, we were able to get the, the, we signed up for the T-Mobile internet service and it was, it, was, it was absolutely a godsend. They sent us a little trash can in the mail, we plug it in, suddenly we've got internet and it was working beautifully. Um, so we were then a connected household and I thought, this is, this is fantastic. I, I, you know, all this, uh, what I call uh, armchair activism paid off. I, I mean, I'm not actively out there campaigning, but I'm not afraid to voice my opinion about our internet providers in the area. Um, and, and we were able to get something that worked here. Um, we used it through uh, uh, the COVID times and then come uh, uh, beginning of 2022, something more interesting happened. There was a certain guy in a certain jet called Air Force One flew out here and gave a presentation about <laughs> the thousand acres of empty farmland east of Columbus, Ohio, where Intel's going to put a plant. That's six miles from here. So we got this sudden influx of interest in this area and we're thinking oh well now we've got you know we've got our t-mobile fixed wireless we may be able to get uh, uh fiber uh, out here and um you know things are going to start coming now that intel's building right down the street this is going to be great so that was beginning about right around february march of 2022 just last year well as well, about just one second when did you buy the house was the question bought the answer. house in 20 in 2015. okay in 2015 Thanks. so that was the start of the story right um, so Intel's coming. It's so we're, Intel's, we're back in the last year now. Right. We're back into last year. Intel's coming. Intel's coming as of the beginning of last year. And we're thinking we're going to get some infrastructure investment. Well, come about October of last year, our lovely T-Mobile service, which had been just wonderful. We went all in. We canceled our old Verizon cell phones. We went all in on T-Mobile. We had our T-Mobile lines. We had our T-Mobile home internet. It was working beautifully. We had a great signal. We had great speeds. Um, you know, I had I had co speeds comparable to what I was seeing on wireline through uh, wide open Western Spectrum or one of the the, the, the other incumbent providers. And so I, ha I had very little to complain about. And then it started faltering come about October 1st. We couldn't figure out why. So I submitted a ticket in to find out what was going on. As it turns out, T-Mobile was going through turning down 3G. And as they were turning down 3G, they were doing tower consolidation, the Sprint T-Mobile merger that was supposed to make this access, you know, so much better. And was part of the reason that they spun up the the home internet service right so what had happened was they were they had turned down the sprint tower they decommissioned the sprint tower that was serving our area so our t-mobile service went completely berserk and i said well are you planning to stand something else up they said well we have a t-mobile tower that's adjacent to the sprint tower which is why we shut the sprint tower down but we reoriented the cell and bands on that tower 180 degrees away from your location. <laughs> Inexplicably. I mean, they didn't have an explanation for it. They said they would try an up tilt, try to get it working. It never did. Um, it got to the point where they actually bought our cell phones back. So we had uh, um, uh, Apple iPhones that we had gotten through T-Mobile when we uh, uh, signed up for the service. And they bought the phones back. Because they said, we don't plan to provide service to your area, so we'll, we'll take your hardware back and you guys can go find another provider. So we ended up having to switch to another cell provider. Interestingly enough, there was no other alternative for Internet. So it was either that T-Mobile uh, uh, home Internet or nothing. So I'm actually talking to you now on that T-Mobile Internet. The difference being, unlike a cell phone that's in my pocket down in the basement or on the first floor of the house, I have a 4x4 MIMO antenna up on the roof that probably is violating my terms of service. So I probably shouldn't be admitting it, but hey, it is what it is. Um, hooked into my T-Mobile home internet, dialed directly in on the tower that's facing 180 degrees away. 
And as you know, it's winter in Ohio right now, so there's no leaves on the trees, so I get a great signal. Come about March, when those start to regrow, I'm probably going to be without internet again. Hey, Jeff, wow, so don't worry be... about it. Don't don't worry about it. We don't have any um, people who watch this show, so nobody's going to find out. That you're, uh, <laughs> okay. I, Doug, I think I think you got something to say, but I wanted to throw in quick that um, this is remarkable. But Jeff, I hope you know that uh, you're part of a corporate synergy, so I hope that makes it, you sleep a little bit better at night. Yes, I've been synergized, and it's fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, I apologize. That was way more than 90 seconds, but there's just so much that we've been through and over the years. And just getting to this point where we actually had service and having it pulled out from under us was 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 absolutely incredible. And it's absolutely a part of that uh, corporate synergy because, you know, reducing the dupl duplication of, of cellular towers for T-Mobile has been great for T-Mobile. Not so great for me. Doug? Well, I'm going to just say I hear the same thing, Kim. I hear this story over and over and over and over and, and folks move out. You know, the, the bad thing was that those two companies told him they had service. Mm -hmm. If he would have called them before he closed the house and asked, and they said, we're not covered there, you probably wouldn't have bought the house. And so right. that, that that's where the problem comes in. And, and and Kim hit it right. Their maps probably show him as served. Or at well, least the old I'm... maps did. What do the new maps show, Jeff? Did you want? That's what so I'm wondering. That, that's an interesting point because the new maps actually show that I'm serviced by, oh, well, they call it Cincinnati Bell, um, <laughs> which, is, which is Agile. Which is technology. a new player. Oh, that's Agile. Well, uh, apparently, because when I, I've got it open here, I, I'll, I'll look very quickly. Um, Cincinnati Bell is what they're calling Agile Networks. So even though Agile says that this address is not serviced, and Agile actually pulled out of, uh, I think they got forced out of that Marks Agreement because it was under a previous uh, administration in the state. Um, I, I actually talked with the broadband office um, that Lieutenant Governor Husted uh, is the head of and, and talked to them about it. And they said, that, yeah, the Agile deal was kind of a raw deal and poorly executed by the previous administration. And it's not something that's going to be sticking around. So don't put a lot of stock in, in, in getting service from that. So I'm still listed as being serviced by them, even though even the state's turning their back on that as a service. Um, I'm still listed as uh, having T-Mobile service. Um, which is marginal. What you do for some months? I, I, well, I do. I'm using it right now, except I have a $400 antenna that makes it go, right? <laughs> um, when it's not, when it's not leaves on the trees. Right. We have, we're still listed as serviced by, uh, by, of course, SpaceX, by Starlink. Um, although you can't get it because uh, the entire state of Ohio is waitlisted for Starlink. So we're serviced by it, a service you can't get. Um, and then your, your, your regular, you know, your Viasat and your, and your Usenet that's everywhere. So we still have services listed. Um, interestingly, it's, it's, I don't have CenturyLink or Spectrum listed, which were the, the ones that previously said that they serviced the area. So it seems that that's been corrected. I did issue a challenge, of course, for Agile Networks. That was an easy one because they straight up say that they don't service this address, send them a screenshot, and that challenge is, is pending. Um, I also sent the the challenge for for um, uh, uh, the Starlink simply because you can't get it. I mean, it's it's great. They say it's coming in 2023. I don't call that serviced, although we may be serviced by that in the future. It's all on how you interpret that. Um, I'm leaving it to whoever at the SEC decides if that challenge is going to be successful. We'll see what happens. And then I challenged T-Mobile. The T-Mobile one was the interesting one because I actually have documentation from T-Mobile support from the T-Force team. Um, that says that you know we're not bringing service to your area that's not happening um and they bought my phones back and i have that entire communication included that when i sent it over to the fcc in the challenge and the challenge response was that it didn't fit the criteria so they rejected that <laughs> challenge and said that that doesn't fit the criteria that this is a service issue this is not a technology doesn't exist issue I would argue on the contrary. If, if I no, can't it's a technology use it, it's a, it doesn't exist because it's not aimed at you. It doesn't exist. If it's not, uh, the technology can exist and not be usable. I right. think there's an important delineation there. I mean, we can have a signal, but if you have to have a, a $400 MIMO antenna on your roof, and I happen just so happen to live on the top of the hill, the people at the bottom of the hill, and they're not getting it. Um, I, I can't imagine that, 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 that my challenge doesn't fit the criteria there. So well, here's yeah, good news for you, Jeff. When Starlink finally turns up, they only accept X number of customers right. for, for census track, and they won't tell us how many that is. So right. if your neighbors get it first, you'll still not be served. Well, right. I, I just very likely to get it for my I'm sorry, go ahead. 
I was going to say, I just want to know if uh, Starlink had the easiest way of doing the FCC map. So they just go and say, we're cover everyone <laughs> and like not it's, really it's, have to it's, actually it's, look at anything. It's, it's really funny you mentioned that because, of course, you know, the, uh, being an inquisitive person, I was looking for anomalies in the mapping because I'm like, why in the world is our is the entire state of Ohio saying that it's covered? If I zoom out, it's all blue. I'm like, that's I know that's not true. So I started looking around. And I didn't see anything particularly in my neighborhood or even in Ohio that, that caught my eye as something that stood out. But because Starlink, HughesNet, and Viasat all uh, say they service the, the world, um, there's actually an uninhabited island in Lake Huron that is listed as serviced on the FCC. <laughs> it, has, it has a, uh, a U.S. Forest Service uh, operated lighthouse on it that no one lives in. But uh, yeah, uh, so an un uninhabited lighthouse actually has better service than my house in Lincoln County, Ohio, which is a little disappointing. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that's fair because, you know, lighthouses are important. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, we have a solution for you, and Travis is the one that can tell you this. Do you have a buddy who lives in another state? Buy a Starlink, get the mobility one, the one you put on your camper, and drive it to your house and park it. Mm -hmm. Right. It'll work. It'll work. And I'm thinking that may, that may actually end up having to be our solution if the when the trees uh, the they'll bill you at the other address, and so they'll never know that. So yeah, that's what you need to do. Right. So I'll, I'll end up having you know a, a mobile Starlink dish sitting out in the yard for sure. Well, it, it'll be a gray market. I mean, you're not completely legitimate there, but let's not tell anybody because again, yeah, no well, one's watching. My, this. My, I can tell you, my Mimo <laughs> antenna is not legitimate either, considering the what I had to do to port e mobiles. Uh, well, uh, mobiles. Travis, you got something quick, and then we got to move on. Well, this just highlights the importance of 13G, Mr. Mitchell. That will solve all of our problems. So yeah, we'll all have cancer and, and pass away, no doubt. Well, yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it's an, and and don't get your hopes up on any of these wireless technologies. No. So uh, it would um, they're a your your T-Mobile story is very interesting, but it's it's a stopgap at best. So I I would highly promote. I don't know. Ugh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. If 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 you can't get a cable there or a fiber there, it's a real somebody's tough. gonna somebody's gonna get a grant mm -hmm. and build your area. Yeah. The next well, that's four or five this years. is literally. But, I mean, but that could but it could be four or five years. So, but yeah. this is this is that rare case where it actually makes sense to have a line extension policy, perhaps yes. not in all the places where they're using it, but in this case, likely. Right. Well, but there's and there's millions of these cases, all these little yeah. places that are just off the edge of the networks. I think, you know, yeah, because there are states that do that. There are states that are giving out slight amount of money, and then when the cable company could come to all 12 of your houses on grant money, and it would be done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Jim, last word. I think it just highlights what we all know, and I think it's a bigger problem. Jeff, you moved into your house in 2015, but all the people who did the mass exodus into some of these rural areas for better, um, like you know, living circumstances or whatnot are now experiencing this because they didn't think about their broadband needs. So mm -hmm. I think you are just a very vocal case, but I'm seeing it across the country. Everywhere. that You're seeing these people who moved yeah. into these really nice mountainous towns and then they're like, well, what about my connectivity? <laughs> it's, it's an afterthought. And we don't even think about that until you, you're in those circumstances sure. and you don't have it. So Jeff, uh, the other thing I would say is just that, like, I'm curious about your neighbors. Um, I submitted a challenge because uh, a wireless provider claimed to offer symmetrical gigabit to my address. I'm frankly not expecting to win on the availability challenge. But even if I did, all my neighbors would still show up as having gigabit symmetrical wireless, right? And well, so they'll just take you out of the map. Right. And so, like, that's the thing is, I just feel like this is a sign of like white mapping actually is important and getting it right. And you can't just sort of throw it out there and hope people like Jeff are going to like, are going to run out and fix the maps because you actually need everyone to do right. it. And we need to treat it seriously like a real problem. But, but Jeff has a real problem and they're not going to fix his map. That's yeah, why right. the maps will never be good. Damn it, you made me talk about yeah. maps. Yeah. <laughs> there goes Doug on the maps. Yeah. Chris, you touched on the truly frustrating thing about this. I mean, that's what we went through with Ardoff, right? I mean, because our census block has a couple houses in it that are serviced, that it, they're considering this to be a serviced area. Uh, I, I'm going to be in the same circumstance through this, this round of, of mapping updates because I'm going to be that island. I mean, it, it's hard to quantify when you look at the map 900 feet. So, right. of course, my neighbors are going to show us service because they are. Um, so my neighbors to the south, they're going to show us service because they are. Now, let me tell you how much they love their DSL. That's another story. However, they are serviced. So they're going to show up as a green dot on the map. 
there's going to be a very small island here, and that's not going to be acknowledged because there's 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 no economy of scale in, in funding a, a build out here. So we're right. going to perennially be the, the the last mile. Our only hope is is if the our because we are on electrical co electrical cooperative. Our only hope is that the electrical cooperative starts to address some of these issues, and they've been talking about that. But there's never been any any motion toward actually moving into that space. It's a big risk for them, particularly with the incumbent providers sitting right on our borders. And with Intel now here, we mm -hmm. have no idea what's going to happen from a day-to-day -day basis, let alone multi-year. So they're, they're, they're not willing to make that investment. So it's going to be an interesting time for us. Well, thank you. Thank you much, Jeff. And uh, we're going to have to move on, but I really, yeah. it's been great to see you Thanks, and have Jeff. you on the show. Good Likewise, luck. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good luck.